Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm Felix, the Twitter, and welcome to FAC uh, 1503. And today we're going to be covering the last chapter, which is the chapter on correspondence. Remember, I'm just trying to guide you through your learning unit, and you shouldn't just take the video, but you must also go through the video with the PDF that is supplied and provided for by UNISA. You can get this PDF on Telegram groups. You can simply download Telegram and and join the groups for FAC and you'll find the study guide there. So remember if it's your first time here, like, subscribe and this is the last video. So I'm expecting you to have started from uh, 1 all the way up to uh, 8, up to 7. So this is this becomes your, your 8. So without wasting much of your time, let's just jump into it. When you're dealing with correspondence, right? With dealing with correspondence, you basically have been given a client, but for one reason or the other, you are not in the same geographical location. So, for instance, you are in Johannesburg, and your your client wants a collection done on their for them in Durban. So, because when you have a office only in Johannesburg, you then contact another client or another attorney, another attorney, and that attorney. Uh, would be based in Durban. The attorney in Durban is then going to make the collection on your behalf and then recoup the money, remove their fees. After removing their fees, they will send the money back to you. That is basically the 100% of what happens at correspondence. You are not in the location where the collection of the service has to be executed. Your firm is not in the location. For instance, you can be in Cape Town and a client of yours says, no, I have a maintenance case or I have monies that have to be collected in Jobek. So instead of you dropping everything and going up here to Jobek or you dropping everything, going down to Durban, down to Cape Town, down to Eastern Cape, you rather get in touch with another attorney who's already there and then you correspond. You then correspond between you and that attorney. So you are the one, if you are the one who's going to be giving the instruction, you are the one who's referred to as the instructing attorney. Basically, you are the one who received the client. And as you have received the client, the client has instructed you, has, has told you that they want a collection at a place where you don't have an office. So between the both of you, you and the other attorney that you're now going to give an instruction to do on your behalf, you are then instructing that attorney to act on your behalf, making you the instructing attorney. Then if you are the instructing attorney, automatically uh, the other guy or the other person or the other attorney becomes the instructed. So you must be very careful with questions some of the questions are going to be requiring you to do the books or to answer on behalf of the instructing uh, or to answer questions or to, to do probably the journals or the ledger accounts of the instructing. At the same time, another question will be asking you to do the ledger accounts of the instructed. So you have to understand, okay, who is who and what money is, how are the monies supposed to move in that, who's, in whose direction and in whose favor they right so the categories of instructions that are going to be given there are instructions where there are no monies involved which are mainly your divorce cases settlement disputes uh patents companies and settlement of the uh, divorces so they are saying these instructions when you are given these instructions there are no money involved then there are instructions where trust monies are involved, mainly the collection of debt and child maintenance. And you're right, if you're doing an ABC question, do expect to, to be asked or to be tested on some of these on multiple choice. So you have to know, okay, which is which. Then there are two types of collections. There are soft collections. Soft collections, you're talking about your phone call messages, emailing each other and billing or pay billing uh, all that and that collection that's when you're now you're no longer communicating via uh, telephone phoning the person messaging the person you are now giving letter of demands you're not giving acknowledgement of debt you're now giving 
summons. So most of those summons that you're going to come across, it becomes, it falls under art collection. So you will be given a list of options and they'll be telling you, okay, which one is hard, which one is soft or what is true or false, meaning you have to know which one is going to be falling where, right? It's going to be falling where. Moving right along. So as you do the collection, uh, as the instructor does the collection, there is a commission. There is a commission attached to it, right? There is a commission which is talk, which is talked about, which is called a collection commission. So they are talking about here yeah, saying collection commission is also added when a data pays directly into the company's trust account. Therefore, uh, a percentage therefore is kept for costs. It may uh, be up to ten percent. But the amount might not exceed a thousand. So what are they talking about there? They are saying of the amount that you are going to be collecting, there is a commission which is ten percent of that amount, which 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 is supposed to be uh, collected. But of that ten percent, that ten percent can never uh, be more than a thousand, right? Meaning, if you are going to be collecting, for instance, if you go down in page five on the information. You were you collected eight thousand, right? They're saying the amount collected by the instructed attorney was eight thousand, right? So when you're not having your collection commission there, you now have to say eight thousand multiplied by your ten percent. So I'll quickly simplify it for you. What they simply mean there is say you're collecting eleven thousand. You're collecting eleven thousand. How much commission are you gonna get on the eleven thousand? You now have to say 11,000 multiplied by 10% and it's going to be 1,100. But because it's 1,100, the limit is 1,000, meaning you can only collect 1,000 as your collection commission. That's basically what they mean they regarding the collection commission. And you also must bear in mind this amount can be more. It's in a case where you have to do, let's say, three collections not just at one go for instance someone wants you to collect uh you someone wants you to collect fifteen thousand so you do the thousand for the first collection you do the thousand for the second collection you do the thousand again for the third collection meaning in total it will be three thousand but per collection it is supposed to be limited to just a thousand right to just a thousand so we also have what they also talk about is uh uh the correspondence allowance which is the one third so please be on the lookout for the correspondence allowance know what to put in the correspondence allowance and what not to put right so the correspondence allowance is going to be talking about your professional fees and your collection commission that is going to be your correspondence allowance a third of your professional fees and your collection commission right so please 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 do you should be at a point where you're able to differentiate okay which ones are going to be falling under professional fees which ones are going to be falling under collection commission page nine explained it for you thoroughly what is going to be what page nine is talking about SA attorneys devoted uh, to call uh, devoted time to collect set notes, for example, time which was sp uh, spent in, uh, in receiving instructions, issuing summons, and a uh, payment of levies. And if SA attorneys are unable to collect, they are still responsible for the payment of fees. So, professional fees that is drafting a summon and all those fees that the instructor is going to charge you, you have to. To pay for them collection commission we've already talked about it which is your your 10 percent so when you're dealing with the fees the professional fees please do not include sheriff costs do not include tracing costs in that calculation i'll say it again do not include sheriff costs do not include tracing costs they are not part of that calculation so do yourself a favor go to page five and try to figure out what's happening there based on what we've talked about look at page five how they set up the page five there all the way to the general format of 
the correspondence statement. So with the general format of the correspondence, uh, corresponding statement, things that you just have to actually understand is the instructing atin is always going to be on the left. The instructed is going to be usually at the letter head, right? Then the amount which is bound to be collected is going to be on the right hand side. Then the 10% of it is going to be calculated on the left hand side. Then you also have uh, the one third, the fees that are there. Then after getting the fees, you put your sheriff costs, you put your tracing costs, and you then also go and put, let's say there were summons and everything. Then the amount which is going to be transferred, the electronic funds transfer, that is usually the balancing figure. So the same way we did bank recon, you're going to look at which one is the bigger side. You add on both sides, then you balance the smaller side with the bigger side to get that amount, which is the 5,000 that they spoke about there. Then from there onwards, we now have the accounting records in example. So I urge you, please take step by step, look at the examples given for the instructing, look at the journals that they'll be using, because it is going to come in your question. So you have to look at how they are doing the journals for the instructed, how they are doing the ledger for the instructed, how they are doing the ledger for the instructing. They also add a VAT component to make things a bit interesting, but VAT does not change. So also have a look at it and do give me feedback on how you are faring. But those are the key things that you just have to look out for, okay? There is an agreement between you and another firm because geographically you are not in the place where you're supposed to perform you, uh, the, the, the duties required by your client. So because you are not at that place where you're required to, to, to perform, you then give that instruction to someone else. Then that someone else becomes the instructed. And because you are giving the instruction, it means you are the, the instructing attorney. By the time you finish, doing that then you do your, your your correspondence statement and your balancing figure then the instructed is going to then transfer you the eft which means the balance after they have taken their fees and so forth so basically chapter eight that is it about it i'll also look around if i have another video on the correspondence statement i'll put it in the description for you but it's been a journey Thank you so much for being part of it. And as per 1503, that is it. Go and do your study units. Go and do your examples. Accounting is not just going to fall into your head. You have to also take time to practice until you get it right. There's a lot of theory that you need to attend to. So please do yourself the kindness. After watching this, do the examples. Do the examples with an opened book. Do the examples with a closed book. Be on the lookout for the things that I've spoken about in all the chapters. And I'm wishing you all the best with your, with your studies. Remember to like, subscribe, like, subscribe, and all the best. Thank you.